All right, I want to talk about a wave and what is a wave. Well, just to start off, to have a wave, you have to have a disturbance. You have to have some sort of disturbance in nature. So here we have a, something bobbing up and down, which is disturbing nature. Now let's just pretend like there's some water right here. See how organized I am? We have water. Um, and this thing keeps hitting the water. And it hits the water at a very uh, periodic, uh, with, with a certain periodicity. Right? It goes down, boing, boing, boing. And every time it hits the water, it creates ripples. And so the frequency of this bobbing mass on a spring is going to be the same as the frequency of the water waves that are going to go away from the source of disturbance due to, um, due to this disturbance. A wave is that energy as it moves away from the disturbance. So the, the water is being disturbed, and, the, and every single time the water is disturbed, that energy passes through the water away from the disturbance. The water itself doesn't go very far. The water particles, the water molecules, are going to go more or less up and down. They actually go in a bit of a circle uh, as the wave progresses away from it in ripples. The, the, the wave itself is the energy that produces that. Okay, so basic anatomy of a wave. Let's dry up the water there. Let's say we have a really smooth sine wave. Imagine this if you can. Um, so, and this is going up and down. What if I were to walk along as I did that? What that would produce, if, say I had a marker attached to that mass as the marker, as I walked along, the marker would produce a nice sinusoidal wave. It would look something like this. And so on, right? So that's your basic sine wave. Here's some terminology. The top of the wave is called a crest. Crest here, a crest there. The bottom of the wave is called the wave trough. This black horizontal line represents the uh, equilibrium position. Equi or equilibrium. Equilibrium, that's the bell. So that's the equilibrium position. If you could imagine over time, uh, if this is a water wave, for example, it's going to dampen, the amplitude's going to decrease, and over time it's going to become just glassy calm, and that would be its equilibrium position. And then it requires some disturbance in the water, and then the wave starts doing that again. So that brings me to the next thing. That is the amplitude. So the amplitude, we use a letter A for that. That would be negative A because it's below equilibrium. Amplitude, A. Normally measured in meters and SI units. And much of the frequency of a mechanical wave is represented by its amplitude. If you've ever been swimming in the ocean or surfing, you know the bigger the wave, uh, the greater the energy. And those big waves are a little scary. Uh, so they, a lot of the, the energy is represented here in this amplitude. Amplitude represents the maximum displacement of a wave. It equal, uh, sorry, the maximum displacement of the medium, the particles in the wave. Maximum displacement of the particles. If it's a water wave, the maximum displacement of the water. So let's think of a rope. Say you have a rope and you're going like that. Well, this is the rope going up and down. The rope doesn't have to be at that point. It might be like right here. So it's been displaced from equilibrium. So here's some displacement from equilibrium up that way. But it, So some x some delta x, but it's not all the way at the highest point it's going to go. Amplitude's the highest or the lowest, right? And then this would be zero along here, zero displacement. This would be the maximum displacement at amplitude. 
maximum negative displacement right there. So, a couple other things. When you measure from one point to a successive identical point on a wave, from one point to a successive identical point, and they have to be successive and they have to be identical, then you get what's called the wavelength. Wavelength, which uses the Greek letter lambda. My Greek letter lambdas all look like upside down Y's. Do not use the letter L. Use a lambda. Lambda for wavelength. So we have amplitude, wavelength. You also know that this wave is traveling. The wave is moving through something. We are studying what are called mechanical waves. We'll talk about elect electromagnetic waves later, although they also have many of the same properties. In fact, most of the same properties. But this wave, such as an ocean wave or a wave on a string as you're going up and down, it's moving with some speed. All right? It's moving with speed v. So the wave speed, v, let's say that the wave is moving that way. So as you stand here, the wave's going along. You see the crest moving along and so forth. <clears throat> A couple other characteristics. If I were to stand here and count wave crests, let's say uh, the waves are going fairly quickly and I count in one second, one, one, two, three, four, four waves pass me in one second. That would be a frequency, that would be a wave frequency of four waves per second, four cycles per second, four hertz. So the number of waves that pass by per second in SI units is the wave frequency. We've seen that variable before when we studied circles. For, uh, for circles, the number of times it goes around every second. This time it's the number of wavelengths that pass, me, pass by me per second. I count four per second. So we say number of wave cycles, all right, number of cycles per second in SI units and hertz. And by the same token, again, that's the frequency. And by the same token, if four pass, me, pass by me per second, then how long to take one wave length to pass by? Well, it would be the reciprocal of that. It would be a quarter of a second. If four pass by in one second, then one of them pass by is in a quarter of a second. And that would be the period of the wave T, all right? That's the time for one. That's the time for one cycle. All right. In this case, per one wavelength. And then the last part of this is this classic wave equation that relates uh, frequency or period and wave speed and wavelength. Well, assuming that the wave is traveling at a constant speed, then you know that. Speed is distance over time. And we can actually use that equation. If the wave travels 12 meters in three, in three seconds, it's traveling 12 over three or four meters per second. But frequently, we don't know that. Frequently, no pun intended. Actually, the pun was intended. Uh, sometimes we know a very specific distance, the length from one point to another, again, from crest to crest or from trough to trough or from this point where it's going down to that point again where it's going down, we sometimes know the wavelength. So frequently we know the wavelength. Well, what's the time it takes for one wavelength to pass that distance? That's the period. So the speed of a wave is wavelength over period. But remember that frequency is the reciprocal of period. Therefore, V also equals F lambda. That's a very useful equation. V equals F lambda.